Councilwoman, thank you. Majority Leader Councilwoman Tasha Diaz. Tasha, first of all, let me thank you for always making yourself available to us. Every time that we contact you with uh, concerns, questions that the people of Yonkers has for you, you always make yourself available to address those, those questions. Even though you also always make yourself available to the people of Yonkers so you can give them those answers directly to them if they call your office. That is correct. But since they didn't, they <laughs> called me, so I'm here. You had a program last weekend uh, called Care Program where you donated some stuff. Yes, I did. Tell well, myself and multiple people. Okay, so tell us about what Care Program is, what is the goal, who was involved, how did do you make that happen? Because I see that your concern concern is just is not just with your district. You are always everywhere, helping people, and I know you for a few years long before you were a councilwoman, and that's how I met you. Yes. Food distribution. This yes. go, we go back maybe seven to ten years ago. I don't know. About ten. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how I met you. Tell us about the care program. Well, the care program was a vision that I had. Um, and I wanted to gear it towards the Yonkers community. Um, during the week of the pandemic, we know that a lot of people were stricken um, with some insecurities. So I wanted to ensure that we did care. The people in the city of Yonkers do care. Myself, the mayor, uh, we had some state officials that were there. We had some local people that jumped on like um, Castanaro Dental, Gasway Gas Station, um, Ridgeway Alliance Church, where all of the items that we received were donated, excuse me, all of the food items that we received were donated. Um, we also got some support from Local 628, which did all the cooking of the food and that kind of stuff. You know, uh, Councilwoman, Yonkers is also full of good stuff mm -hmm. and we need to give credit to those who credit is due. Okay. Yes. We help Yonkers, we help the people of Yonkers. That is an organization that they stay incognito, we don't know. But personally, I think that sh we should give them a shout out so people know who's helping who. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, the goal of the care program is to help people. What type of items do you bring into the location? Well, there was a lot of donated items that we got, um, socks, um, brand new book bags. We got a lot of cleaning supplies. Um, as I told you, a lot of the food that was the snacks and things that were there, they were donated through Ridgeway Alliance Church and Feeding Westchester. Um, when it came to the food, the fire department bought the food and cooked the food. There was also a donation from South Broadway Bid. Um, so it was different entities, multiple entities came together as one to ensure that this program went off without a hitch. Um, we also got some donations from Small World, which were the bounty houses and, and stuff. Um, I do a lot of things with them. I'm always at the school, I'm always donating to them as well. So it was just the people that I always look out for. They came together with me to help me look out for the community. Um, we wanted it to be a free day everything free, whether it was the rides, whether it was food. We gave out a lot of designer Calvin Klein coats. They were brand new. We gave a lot of bass vests out. They were brand new. We gave a lot of Calvin Klein hoodies. Um, we gave out Bomba socks. Um, we gave out quality items. A lot of the things that we gave out were very quality items, and we wanted to do it before Christmas, right? We wanted to do it to ensure with the weather breaking and it being cold that the people that were in need were able to get what they needed without having to ask. Now, Councilwoman, I got a couple emails of people that express some concern about some items, consumable items, yes. that uh, were given at, uh, at your event. They uh, complained that the items were expired or very close to expiring, uh, that some of them got sick, uh, you know, but the it's almost impossible to keep everybody happy. Of course, we but, know that. But I think it's important for us to make it clear, yes. inform, and educate folks the difference between expired, yes. date of expiration, yes. sell by this date. Yes. We need to inform people so people know exactly. 
you know, how things go, and they can formulate their opinions about things based That's on correct. intelligent and correct information. That is correct. Okay. So tell us a little, bit, a little bit about the dates, expirations. Well, when I started this program, um, this wasn't something that I, they just gave me a bunch of food and let me hand it out. Um, I had to actually go for a training course, and all of my volunteers have gone for a training course. Um, we actually have a booklet that we go by. This is the Feeding Westchester Guide that we go by. Um, we sat in a class. It's about an hour and a half class. Um, and it gives, you, it, it gives you a lot of education, step by step. A lot of these things I already knew because my grandmother was a caterer. She cooked for m multiple people. She did churches. She did those kind of things. So I was, con I was already abreast of a lot of issues when it comes to expiration, sell-by, and those kind of things. But some people aren't. So I'm glad that you're bringing this to me because right now I can actually educate my community. So we want to start by um, where it says expiration date. Now I'm going to read to you what it says. It says, the only items required by federal law to have expiration dates are baby formula and medications. Do not distribute or consume these items past the expiration date. Some states require eggs to have expiration dates but they can still be safe to eat three to five weeks after the expiration dates. Now, when we get to sell-by dates, this is the date the stores must sell the food by. The manufacturer takes in account that the item will be stored at home after the sell-by date. Because stores cannot sell products after the sell-by date, they usually donate the foods when they are close to the date. If the foods have been handled properly, they are still safe to eat and the quality of the food is good. This is the federal guidelines that I'm reading to you. Now, use by date. This date is the manufacturer's recommendation for how long the food will be at peak quality. After the use by date, the food is still safe to eat, but will slowly begin to lose nutrients. That means it's not bad for you, but depends on what the food item is, it will lose nutrients. Pack date, there's also a pack date. This is the date on which the product was packaged. The date is used by manufacturers for tracking purposes. These products have a long shelf life. They have a good quality and can be safe to eat past the date. Best by date. The date indicates when a product will be at its best level of flavor or quality. It is not a purchase or safety date. And then we have a table that we go by as well in the pantry. So depending on what it is, if it's carbonated drinks, it's good six months after the date. Coffee, whether it's whole or grounded, it's good a year after. Instant coffee is good for a year after. Juices, bottled or canned, they're good for a year after. Fruits including apple sauces and juices, 18 months after the date. Pasta, stools, cream sauces, four years. So when you look at that date and you throw it out of the way, you have a four year shelf life on that. Vegetables, four years, four years. When it comes down to certain items such as baking mixes, did you know that they're good for a year? So you may have that box of cake mix or brownie mix in your cabinet, and it may say that after the date, it's not expired. It's good for a year after. As well as cookies and cakes, those kind of items, they're good. Chips are good for two to three months after the date, the sell-by, best-by date. Pasta is good for two years after the date. The reason why our country, I believe, goes through a lot of issues when it comes to food is because we're not educated. We don't know that you can consume things after the Best Buy date. You cannot consume after an expiration date because it won't be good for you. And expiration dates are only on baby formula and medications. Our country, we throw away a lot of food. If you look at other countries, they keep things for, as I stated, the life of the items. So I'm glad that you were able to come to my office because I'm, I'm able to pass this education on to the people in the community. We do our food distributions every Monday and every Wednesday. 
I mean, these are items that come off this truck. It's not, these are not items that I'm going around and I'm taking donations from various people. I'm getting my donations that we are paying for because they don't give it to us for free. We, through Ridgeway Alliance Church, they're purchasing these items, but we're purchasing them through Feeding Westchester and Feeding America because they are the ones that work with these entities, whether it be Sam's Club, whether it be BJ's, whether it be ShopRite. These, they work with these entities in order to get us the food at a discounted price. So we are able to give away food on this magnitude. But Feeding Westchester, Feeding America would never give anybody food or myself food to give to someone that would not be good. I mean, my family was there. I mean, I, people from my community was there. I had my seniors there. I mean, this is something that I've been doing for years. A lot of people think that I just got this once I became elected. I was doing this from when I was a little girl. My grandmother taught me all of these things. And what I did was I carried it on, but once I was elected, I just put it on a bigger scale. I didn't leave it at District 3. I felt as if the, anybody that resides in the city of Yonkers should be able to come and join in the festivities. Well, the reason why we came here and called you was exactly because of this, for information. Yes. So to inform the people so they can make decisions or formulate opinions based on correct information. Yes. Just because somebody says, sell by last month, does not mean that if I eat it today, I'm going to get sick. If that was the case, I would be sick every day because I always buy things cheaper when they expire. So I eat them all. And the manufacturer does that to our communities because they know we toss these items away. We waste a lot of money when we go to the stores and we look at a date and we toss it out. People may not know Gatorade has no expiration date. It can stay on your shelf for years and years. As long as it's not punctured and it's, and it's in a cool, dry setting, which all of our food is stored properly. I mean, they come on site and they look at the pantry that I have, that myself and Nader actually we have. They come in and they look at it. Nobody just handed us these things. We, it took us two years to actually get this pantry up and running. This is a pantry that I deliver to churches. We do homebound. We do people that are COVID. I mean, I work with a lot of entities, so I'm glad that you were able to come here so we could let the people know that everything that we do give out is quality items. They're good items. I mean, we give out pistachios. People, are, those are $11 a pound. We're able to give you those for free. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to, if I can take the burden away from a family, if I can take the burden away from that single mother, if I can take the burden away from that person that weren't able to get their SNAP benefits for that month or that week or they're waiting, that's what I want to do. I want to be someone that's here to help the people. I'm not here to judge anybody. Um, people do that all the time, right? But the only person that can judge is God. He has the last word. And you know, as well as I know, since I've been in this seat, I've been fighting. Fighting for me, fighting for my community. And I will continue to fight for what's right. And I will continue to always voice my opinion to ensure that the people that I represent are educated to know what's good and what's bad, to know what's right and what's wrong. And that's why a lot of people come to me and they confide in me. I mean, those seniors that you saw there, those were my actual seniors. Those were people that I represent that actually come down and support me. I mean, all of that food and everything that we got was all free. I mean, come on, Rue, we bought a zip line to South Yonkers. There were kids that came up to me and said, I would have never been able to do that had you not bought this here. And like I said, I don't look at district lines. I look at need. There's a need for food. There's a need for people to know that people care about them. There's a need for a lot of things. And I'm hoping and praying that I'm, I'm doing my job because I know wholeheartedly I'm putting my all into this. I mean, I'm giving everybody all that I have. I mean... This is what I was taught. This is how I taught my children. And hopefully I can pass this one to others. You know, actions, not words, it is what counts at the end of the day. We all can talk about the good stuff. We all can talk about the good intentions. We all can talk about, I would do this if I had that. But the different story is when we actually do it. Yes. Okay. And I'm boots on the ground. I'm there. I'm physically there. Do you know how many people came up to me that day and hugged me and said, you're in the community? 
You're everywhere. And I said, because the job that I have, I'm supposed to be everywhere. When you do not see me in places, that's when I'm not doing my job. I have nothing to hide. That's why I'm everywhere. We have some trunk or treats that are coming up. We got a lot of things that we're doing good for the city. I want Yonkers to know, do not listen to the people that have the negativity. Negativity, people that have negativity, they love that kind of company. I was always taught misery loves company. If you always believe in God and you get up every day and you believe in what you believe in, whether it be, you know, helping that senior person, you know, whether it be donating, whatever you believe in, that's what you should do. You should not listen to the negativity because negativity, those people that bring out negativity, where are they? What do they do? Be contagious of love, not contagious of negativity. Correct. You know, and, and that's what that's why we here. That's why Yonkers Voice exists. Yonkers Voice, let me make it clear again, that Yonkers Voice is not my voice. Yonkers Voice is the platform where yes. your voice can be heard. Yonkers Voice is the platform where you can engage with the elected officials, such as Tasha Diaz, Councilwoman Tasha Diaz, and others that come on our platform, that accept our invitation to sit down with us, talk to us, and when they talk to us, they talk to you. And we give you that opportunity. We create that bridge between you and them. Until not long ago, before Yonkers Voice existed, which we've been around for 17 years, you would elect the elected officials, and you would see them again on the next election. Now, because of, of Yonkers Voice, in part because of Yonkers Voice, now we created that cyber bridge where they can come on and they can speak with you and tell you and answer your questions directly. The only thing that we at Yonkers Voice ask you is that you respect the person in front of you, present your questions in a polite, respectful way. Yes. Okay? They are not here to be arrested. I am not here to be arrested. But at the end of the day, guys, this is my page. If you come here to arrest anyone, to disrespect anyone, I will remove you from the page. They are not looking for the agreements. You don't have to agree with the person in front of you today or tomorrow or next week or next month, but you don't need to uh, disagree by showing disrespect. Treat disagree, the way you want but to be treated. with respect. Yes, you treat others the way you want to be treated. To finalize, Councilwoman, is there anything else you want to add? Is there anything that uh, you're working on that you want to... Because I love exclusives. And I love do. to be the first one to know. Of course you do. So, yes, there's a lot of things that I'm working on. As you, you know, my wheels are always turning. And it's turning because I know I need to be there for the community. I, I, I want to be the voice for the voiceless. And thus far, I, I believe I've done that. Um, we, had a lot of, we have a lot of things in the works that are coming up, you know, the holidays are coming up. I love children, I love giving back. Um, I already have people that have reached out to me for our Thanksgiving things and our Christmas things. Um, we're gonna be doing a couple of trunk or treats. You know, we, I do my annual um, Halloween event. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of things that are coming up. I got a lot of quality of life issues that I'm also gonna be addressing um, with the police department and the district attorney's office, and of course our mayor's office. So please stay tuned. We got a lot of good, good things coming to Yonkers. We want Yonkers to know that we love them. We want them to feel safe in the city that they live in. And I want them to call me. I want them to reach out to me. I don't care if I'm not in your district. I'm the majority leader, and I'm the majority leader for a reason, because I'm here for everyone. Before I was the majority leader, I'm here for everyone. But now I'm in a role where I'm definitely here for everyone. And I want to know everybody that my office is always available. I'm here. Whether it's Monday, whether it's Wednesday, I'm, I'm, I'm in the office. Now, Councilwoman, since you brought up police department and you're working for everyone, I have to bring up just quickly a quick, a quick, a quick question. That is a hot item that we are debating on Yonkers Voice, and that is the mufflers. Yes. The, I don't know how they call what's the correct terminology, but they sound like uh, gunshots. Yes, the backfiring. The, and the backfiring. To some people in Yonkers, that doesn't seem to be a problem. To lots of people in Yonkers, that is a problem. It, yes, okay. it seems it's to a, be, yes. It's a quality of life. It is. You know, I don't want to be laying down and all of a sudden hear those sounds. I don't know if it's gunfire. Correct. I have no idea what's going on. I might have an 
elderly parent, a baby. It affects me. It affects yes. lots of other people. It does. How do you see that? Subject? Um, I do that, think that that's a quality of life issue. And I'm actually proud that the police department are cracking down on these. I have a dog. I have a small dog. That scares my dog. A, a, a lot of people in my district, they call me. I mean, it's not like they, they're just doing it to bother people. But when it's 11 o'clock at night, when it's 8 o'clock and you're winding down and you had a long day or you taking care of a senior that's, you know, just got down to lay down, that poses a problem. When you're zooming up and down the streets, you're cutting off cars, you're, that becomes a safety issue. We want to keep everyone in Yonkers safe. So it may not bother some But it does bother others, especially if you're in between a building where there's an alley. That magnifies. So that, that little backfire may be small to the person in a car. But if you're in an alleyway, that magnifies about five to ten times. But noise pollution was always illegal. Yes. Always. Yes. You know, sometimes it might not be enforced, but And it was always illegal. Yes. But now it's being enforced. And Correct. that's what it is. Same thing about the garbage. You know, with the enforcement of the garbage, you know, people said, why do I have to wait till sundown to put out my garbage? I've been putting out my garbage before sundown for 30 years. And what I always tell them is you may, been, you may have been doing that, but it's wrong. It's on the books and it says sunset. So there's a lot of things that relaxed that now in this day and age we need to enforce. And it's not, we're not trying to be mean. We're not just trying to pick on people. We want everybody to know that we hear cries from everyone. And we want to try to address every quality of life issue we can. Councilwoman, thank you very much. Now, you know that elections, you didn't think I was going to let you go that easy, right? Oh. So, elections are coming up. Yes. Soon. Yes. Who do you support? Have you made your mind yet? Of course. Please tell us. I support the wonderful Nader Sage. And I say that because what I'm able to do on this magnitude is because of him. He assisted me. His family has assisted me. These are people that we need. I think that we would be doing Yonkers a disservice if we did not send Nader back to Albany. Nader is a go-getter. Nader has worked in education. Nader knows about law. Nader knows and has what it takes to be a fighter for Yonkers. We want to continue to make sure that Yonkers gets. And Nader has been delivering from the library to food insecurities, to helping people with unemployment issues. I mean, I had people call me during the pandemic that had a problem with getting through about their unemployment benefits. I picked up the phone and I called Nader. Nader actually did a one-on-one -on -one with these individuals. And these people didn't know that they could actually contact a council person to get to a state person. But that's how you know that Nader and I are a good team. That is local and state working together to make it happen for the residents and the constituents of the city of Yonkers. Last question. La I promise. Mayor Spano has one more year. It's a lot of conversation going on. Is he going to run? Is not going to run? Will the, the council pass another term? Where is your stand stance on that? Well, I haven't heard that the mayor was running again. No, no, I'm not saying he is, but let's say if he, if he showed interest, where would be your position? Would you support an extension of terms? Well, that would be something that me and my caucus would have to decide as a caucus. It's not just me, right? And it's not just one person. That's something that I think that if it would come about, because those talks haven't been, we haven't had those talks yet, um, I think as a caucus, we have the, the Democratic majority here. I think that would be something that me and my caucus we'll be talking about. But what is your feeling? You know, you are the majority leader, but yes, you I are do. also a Yonkers resident. Of course. And you have an opinion like I have an opinion. Many others have an opinion, but we know that is a process. Yes. But still, we have an opinion. What is your personal opinion if the mayor decided to run? Would you support another term? Well, I don't know. I got to look into that. I don't, I don't know. That's the, I never even really like played and toyed with it. Because we know that this is his last year. He never expressed anything to me. Nobody ever expressed anything to me. I mean, where he is in his role right now, I'm very happy to be working with him. Because a lot of the things that you see that I'm bringing to the community, um, my mayor supports me on a lot of those things. And I want to thank him for that. 
because when I got into this role, people said, you're not going to get this, you're the new person, you're not going to get that. And I beg to differ. There was a lot of things that I went to the mayor about, whether it was for the parks or, you know, for the community. And he was open arms and he was there with me. And he actually sat down and he listened. So I've been working well with the mayor. I mean, we know sometimes things come to an end. I mean, I wish I was on the council earlier because I would have been able to work with him a little bit longer and got a lot of more things done. But he's a great mayor. He's doing a good job. And like I said, I can call him at any time and say, look, mayor, I need this not for me, but for my constituency. And he's always there. He paid for, he helped us and sponsored the event on Saturday. And he was there. He showed up. It was a Saturday. You know, he came down from Syracuse after being with his kids. He made sure he was there. That right there says a lot. I'm scared to see what the city would be like if we didn't have him, depending on who's running. So right now, I'm, I'm just keeping my, my options open, and I'm, I'm looking at to see who the people are that want to represent the city of Yonkers. Because like you said, I'm born and bred here. So I need to know that it's going to be somebody that has the real heart of the city and not just the power for them. Councilwoman, thank you for your time. Thank you for sitting down with us. Thank you for keeping us informed. And thank you, thank, uh, thank you for giving us the, a piece of your mind so we know what's inside that brain, how you see, and your intentions for the future. Thank you again, and uh, we should talk again soon. Thank yes, you very we much. will. Thank you so much.